How do you plant tomatoes to get the best harvest? Today I'm going to show you how I plant my tomatoes. G'day there, I'm Dana from Pewakaka Valley Homestead. Today I'm going to be cleaning out our tunnel house and getting the first of our tomatoes in the ground. You can see here I have a bunch of them and some of them are even starting to flower. I probably should have got them in maybe maybe even a month ago but as you can see down the other end I've actually still got quite a few of the winter crops still growing and giving us plenty so as the broccolis have been finishing up and the silver beet are kind of getting about about done I've been cutting them and taking them out the cauliflowers some of them are still heading um, but what I'm going to do is actually plant the tomatoes in between them and then once they've finished giving me their cauliflowers I'll just cut them off at ground level because these tomatoes really need to get in the ground. The other thing I really need to do is pull out this which is our old watering system and this is our new drip tape that comes off of our grey water system um, It comes out of the washing machine and I actually I actually really need a better filter system for um, filtering this stuff out of the washing machine before it gets in here because it's only been set up for a week or two and it's already starting to clog up the drippers. So if you've got any tips on how I can filter those out, feel free to chuck it in the comments. I would love some ideas because it's just those tiny little fibres from the um, washing machine that are blocking the holes up. So anyway, I'm going to take this one out. This one's our header line that goes from the washing machine to the other end. Um, and then all these drip tapes run off it. clearing veggies like this this is my favorite thing it's a I think it's known as a rice knife it's a Japanese style knife anyway whoa I feel really lightheaded stood up too fast in a hot room um, and it's really good the sharpness is it's like a tiny wee hand scythe really the sharpness is in that bend uh, really good for cutting the roots off plants without actually having to haul them all the way out so that Swiss chard will not go to waste it's gonna go to the rabbits and the chickens and I'm going to get started planting some of these tomatoes. Uh, I've managed to get the glass house pretty much cleared. I've decided to leave the peas up the middle because they are still giving us the beginnings of a harvest and everybody loves new peas. So I'm going to get the first of these tomatoes in. They do need a bit of a water so I'm going to have to give them a good water at the end. Um, so excuse them if they look a little dry. Uh, I'm going to also give them the first pruning. Some of them are quite large and I will show you how I go about planting them. Hopefully the wind's not too loud with the flapping of the tunnel house. Now these are um, tomatoes that have grown from seed and I planted them in July I think, sowed them in July um, and potted them up into some bigger pots. So before I put these in the ground, I'm going to give them a bit of a, their first pruning. You want to take all the laterals out, which are the ones that grow diagonally up in sort of the armpits of the plant. And I also take off all the bottom branches as well. 
So there's some more lateral ones. These ones that grow here. Um, because I'm going to sow this nice and deep, I'm going to plant it up to here. All these little hairs that grow on the stem there can turn into roots, so I'm going to plant it nice and deep. There are lots of things you can put into um, the planting hole of tomatoes. Some people swear by fish heads, some people swear by eggs, some people put milk in. Um, mine are all going straight into compost, so I'm not really doing very much with them. I am going to put a handful of blood and bone meal in with them for a bit of a nitrogen boost, and they have all the other goodies in it that the plants need. And then you just want to plant your plant nice and deep and firm the soil around. Now I'm just going to make sure that these line up quite well with where the drip tape is. I'm just going to work my way along. If your tomato plants are a little bit larger, like these ones are, and they're going a little crazy, um, there's another way you can plant them which will maximise how many roots they grow, and that's actually lying them down in a bit of a trench. So that's what I'm doing with some of these bigger ones. Um, this one I thought had some interesting bits that I'll show you. Here on the stem there, you can see those wee nodules, that's where it will grow a whole lot of air roots. So if you lie that down in the dirt, it'll grow normal roots giving the plant a lot better start off to life. And this one up here, as happens with a lot of heritage varieties, you get this funny looking bloom sometimes, which will give you those cat faced tomatoes, which are not so nice. Um, they go mouldy easily and are kind of lumpy bumpy, funny looking ones. This is actually a bunch of flowers that are all stuck together, but they'll make a bunch of tomatoes all stuck together, which is, you know, fun for laughing at but not so helpful so I actually snip these ones off when it makes funny looking flowers like that so we'll just clip that one off so I've dug sort of a long hole here put my blood and bone in it and it is as simple as just lying the plant down um, just be careful not to snap the stem but the stems are quite flexible and just put it upright. I'm going to, have to clip that one off because it's at ground height. And then you just plant it like you would a normal plant. Just make sure that all those roots that are in there are also covered up as well as firming it around. There we go. I've managed to get all the tomatoes in. And they've had a good drink. And then I've popped the peppers in. I've just shoved these peas out the way. And pop the peppers in as well and actually I've got a good another couple of meters here that I'll probably get some more peppers maybe from the shop to pop in there um, and I haven't planted anything along the end here because I need to get a different connector so that I can run this drip hose along the back as well at the moment it's just doing the long beds it's not actually covering the back so um, there's a spider in my hair <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's not ideal, not having water across the back, so I haven't actually planted anything in there yet. But I will, uh, and probably some more tomatoes, maybe some more peppers. Um, I'm hanging out for another tunnel house, actually, maybe next year. Um, and I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to put it, but... Uh, oh, well, you know, <laughs> we'll find something. Um, some of these tomatoes could probably do with being staked or um, strung up already, but actually I'm really hot and sweaty. This one here... Um, 
is already getting quite tall. Uh, this one here is so tall it won't stand up. Uh, and I do have some strings around, but they don't quite reach where I need them to go. So I will do trellising tomatoes as a video for another day. Um, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to our channel. We bring you videos twice a week on growing and preserving your own food. I'm off for a drink. I'll see you in the next one.